Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another video. Uh, so I'd shown you, I'm not sure when I'm going to exactly end up uploading it, but hopefully I already have a video up showing you guys my uh, newest mailbox where I received some more parts from IC Station on um, for a couple projects that I, I had asked them for some help with. And they had graciously provided me some parts free of charge uh, in order to play with. So one of them was a um, LED matrix display. It's 8x32. And I had asked them for this uh, because I have been using the same alarm clock for something like almost 10 years. And it is dying pretty badly. Like it doesn't remember the time. If there's a, like a brownout on the, the electrical grid, like you know, lights flicker or anything happens, my washing machine turns on, whatever, it will brown out enough to actually reset the time. So I'm like constantly resetting the time on it and it's always blinking stupidly at me and I don't even trust it as an alarm clock anymore. I don't know why I still have it. Anyway, I'm uh, too cheap to buy a new one and I figure it's something so simple I should just make one. So that's exactly what I've set out to do. I've um, gotten a DS1302, I believe it is, from... Uh, from Maxim Semiconductor, and um, I've soldered a little breadboard here with a like a, a CR2032 coin cell battery and a 32 kilohertz crystal that I pulled from something sometime. Anyway, I soldered that to like a, a separate little module to make it easy to debug, and I'm using a, a PIC16F887, uh, and this is all software compatible with the 886 as well. I really didn't need all these pins. It just so happened that this was one of the freely available microprocessors I had in my parts drawer, so I just um, started coding for it. But I can easily port this code to anything. It doesn't use anything specific to this chip. I could even easily port this code to an Arduino. So all the basic uh, you know, uh, ideologies behind my programming methodology, the, um, the software defined serial communications, all of it is very simple and portable. Anyway, so that's enough about um, the parts I use, other than the Holtec um, LED display that um, IC Station sent me. The LED matrix screen is a uh, lattice breakout LED module. It's uh, 8x32, as I said, it's a dot matrix red, and it uses the Holtec 1632C. As you can see, it's on sale currently for $863 for the next five days. Original price about $12. Uh, so yeah, we can see here it has a specialized driver IC, um, and it drives the monochrome displays. It's basically just a, a matrix, so you, you can set the bitmap image, essentially. And it uses a serial interface um, in order to actually send the, the graphical data to the, the display itself. So it's fairly common. It uses a uh, chip select and it has separate read and write pins, which will be interesting because that means that not only can we write to the, the display, we don't need a um, to double buffer the display within our driver or our driver chip, whatever we use to communicate with it, uh, because you can always read back from the data. So that'll save some RAM. Um, let's see what else we have data, obviously. And um, so basically, as I said, this buffers everything on the display, so you don't have to do any scanning, multiplexing, none of that. And the cool thing is you have uh, 16 levels of brightness that you can just send a command and change the brightness. Awesome. So additionally, there's a internal flashing register, apparently, that'll allow you to blink. It looks like uh, at a um, uh, quarter of a second on off duty. Uh, so that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, you don't have to implement that in your microprocessor. You, you can just give it a command and it handles everything for you pretty much, which is awesome. And so this guy runs off of two, about 2.4 to 5.5 volts. So that's perfect for you know most anything I would want to make. And um, minimum brightness only consumes about 30 milliamps. That's, that's pretty good actually for an, L, uh, an L LED display there. Maximum brightness will consume 300 milliamps, which isn't too bad, actually. Uh, and that's at a 5-volt um, input. And let's see what else. There's an internal RC oscillator for this chip. I'm guessing that that's the internal oscillator for that. Uh, you don't have to give it any, any other special signals or anything like that. 
and multiple modes, screen use, yada, yada, yada. You can use multiple, yeah, because this, this has its own built-in controller, so you can connect it to anything. You can connect it to your toaster if you wanted to. <laughs> um, yeah, it only needs uh, three I.O. ports, or if you want to write, then four, I'm guessing. So yeah, this will be pretty cool. They give some suggestions, making a calendar, digital clock, thermometer, thermometer, uh, counter, uh, voltmeter, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to take their suggestion and make a digital clock. So those are the three main components and some tax switches because you're gonna wanna be able to set the time. So I had had previous code from uh, when I was building a, a OLED smartwatch. So I, I took most of the code and I programmed a very simple frame buffer for this display so that I can easily create animations and whatnot. I um, wanted to save a wire on the display so I didn't have to uh, keep reading from the display. Uh, so everything is uh, frame buffer stored. So all the pixels that are lit are stored in the memory inside my pic. So it can do uh, rotation animations and scaling and whatnot uh, inside the chip before even sending it out. And there's just a simple um, routine that just you know, every once in a while uh, updates the display, refreshes it. And it runs off USB, which is very useful. So we can plug this in, and I could show you exactly what it does. So when you first turn it on, it'll remember the time if you have a coin cell in the RTC here. So right now it is uh, currently about 9 p.m., I guess. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, so what we have here is um, uh, four digits, so if it's past 9, 9, either a.m. or p.m., it'll have a leading one, obviously. And um, it has a bar here for to, the, to display if it's a.m. or p.m. And finally, this little spiral animation that I created actually shows you um, the number of elapsed seconds. There's 30 of them, so every two seconds it increments. I didn't have enough room for uh, all 60, so... I, I guess I could have if I used the entire last uh, 8x8 segment. I could have gotten 64 pixels. But, you know, it, it, this is a good enough rough indication of how many seconds has passed within a minute. And it's it's actually pretty cool to watch. And another thing is I had programmed a um, two functions. You're not seeing one of them. One of them I have, um, uh, it can parse text. So you can give it simple strings and it can scroll through it. Um, only difficulty with this pick that I'm using right now is it doesn't have a lot of memory. Um, so you can't store very large strings and that's just a limitation of the way I programmed it and this chip. But anyway, other than that, I have a vertical scroll um, animation that plays um, once every well minute and it staggers. So if it changes more than one uh, digit at a time, it'll actually kind of like waterfall across. Um, you can see it just changed the um, the ones place minutes indicator there. But if it if it um, has to change all the digits, say it, it turns ten o'clock, it'll you know shift from kind of right to left. Uh, the animation is actually pretty cool. So I can show you. I have two different fonts programmed right now, and uh, one font is you know this kind of standard um, character number display. And the other one is this sort of boxy digital retro display, sort of like a, a regular seven segment display. And you can see that kind of ripple effect that I was talking about here, um, where the numbers um, will flow from top to bottom to whatever the new uh, display number is, and it'll ripple from right to left there. You can kind of see there's a slight delay between this one and this one. So yeah, um, if you want to change fonts, uh, this top button is to change the font. I can, I do have enough flash on this chip that I could store a lot more fonts. I only have two for right now um, because I'm not a graphical artist. I'm just a programmer, so I didn't, I couldn't really think of any more besides these two that I would want. Anyway, yeah, um, all fonts are five by seven resolution, or you could do five by eight too. I'm actually the only thing I'm using the bottom line for is for time setting, and I'll show you that in a second. Anyway, um, so to set time, this bottom button here, if you just click, it does nothing, but if you click and hold, it'll go into time set mode, and you can see now I can actually increment the time, and I'll just go through a couple. So say it's uh, 9.53. Uh, to change hours, you wait for this to time out. 
And this little bottom indicator here will show you whether you're setting the minutes or the hours. So right now I'm setting the hours. So right now it's, it thinks it's uh, AM. So let's go to PM. So you can see it turns on this bar of four LEDs here. This is the AM PM indicator. And that'll show up when it's PM and it disappears when it's AM. And everything times out. So if you don't hit a button for a long enough time, it'll exit automatically exit out of the time set mode so you don't accidentally change the time. And I added some special features. So if we turn this off, if we press and hold the time set button and um, once it turns on, we release it, we can actually change the default brightness and these values are saved into EEPROM. So when once you power cycle it again, it'll remember whatever your last um, setting was. So if we press and hold this and turn it on, you can see that it's quite a bit brighter compared to, let's turn it off. This is the normal brightness. This is slightly higher brightness. Um, yeah, this display has 16 levels of brightness. I'm just using the lowest two levels uh, because it's not actually strictly necessary for anything brighter, I've noticed. Um, the I don't want it too bright at night because it'll keep me up. So that I usually actually just keep this on the lowest brightness setting, and it's perfect. I can view this way across the room from my bed, even though it's like I don't know, like 10 feet away from me. It's perfectly visible. It's good to go. So anyway, yeah. Um, other than that, I have another setting. Um, if you press and hold the the mode change or the font change button when it boots up, uh, it'll actually reset the time. Uh, so in this case, if this were in an enclosure and you couldn't easily access the battery, uh, this will provide an easy way of resetting the time to uh, 12 p.m. so that you can go and you know change the time. So let's just do this again. It's uh, 9.51. So one unfortunate thing is it does take a while to scroll through the numbers. I, I thought of um, actually having each uh, ones and ten tens place be settable. Um, but that would just, eh, not strictly necessary. It's not like you're setting the time very often anyway. And we're already almost to uh, 52 right now, which I believe is the time. Let me see. Oh, apparently it's uh, 9.37. My other clock is wrong. <laughs> no! Okay, anyway, change this to 9. And I'll speed through this. It's like watching paint dry. Okay, so it'll just time out, it'll go over here to hours, and then I'm not going to press anything, and it'll go back to regular time display mode, and there we go. That's that, so I can easily change the font if I want to, or not. And so this is going to be my clock. Uh, from now on, I need to 3D print a case or something for it, and these displays are kind of hard to see um, without any type of, um, like, diffusive material in front or something like that. So I actually took one of these bags that um, they come with, if you order from eBay, any type of electronic component, they usually come in these little baggies um, and they're usually just heat sealed at the end and you cut it off. But anyway, I saved these bags because I ship stuff, I, I um, sell chips and stuff like that and uh, need a safe way to actually ship it in the mail. So I'll use reuse these bags often. So I took one to actually kind of darken the display so you can easily, it, it provides more contrast. I've seen um, people put like a white piece of paper or something over these displays and it looks really cool uh, using that as well. So I'm going to have to figure out kind of a case that'll look nice. I'm thinking maybe something, I don't. I could either 3D print something or make something out of wood uh, with a nice like uh, dark stain that would look pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, I wanted to make a clock and I made a clock. <laughs> There you go, you can see that uh, when I turn it off, it retains the time. So yeah, um, this brings me to my final point. So now that I have this clock, um, and it's pretty simple, there's not too many external components. Uh, you can actually buy modules like this pre-built off eBay. Uh, you don't have to solder your own like I did. But I wanted to ask you guys, um, if I were to make a kit of this, um, how many of you guys would be interested in, in uh, purchasing it? Um, I would probably end up selling it for maybe 20 or $30, depending on how many people are interested. If I can buy 
you know, the modules in mass, I could save quite a bit of money. So that would bring down the cost. Um, but if you guys were interested, say for like 20 or $30, a uh, kit form with the display, the RTC, a uh, pre-programmed chip, some tax switches, and maybe a proto board and where you would, um, you would solder it yourself, but all the firmware, everything complicated would already be pre-programmed and ready to go for you guys. So if anyone would be interested in that, uh, just, you know, leave a comment down below and I would look into, um, if there's enough interest, I'll look into maybe starting like a Kickstarter or something, I, I don't know, Tindy, uh, something where I could maybe start uh, selling these kits because I make a lot of this stuff uh, just kind of for my own amusement, but I thought every once in a while in my old videos, I'll get a comment asking if um, I'm selling any of the old projects I've done. And usually by that point, if I wait long enough, I'd lost interest in it or I can't find the source code. So it's impossible. So I thought... Now when I make something, if it's something that I think might interest you guys, um, you know, I'll ask you right then and there in the demonstration video if you guys would be interested in buying a kit or either a fully completed or something. So yeah, uh, just uh, put your opinions down below if you are interested in that. If not, then, you know, no biggie. Uh, this is something that I needed personally, so it's already served its purpose. Once I put it in a case, I will actually use this uh, to replace my, my crappy alarm clock. <laughs> That has been long overstated. It's welcome. Anyway, I would like to thank IC Station once again for providing the display. Um, these guys are pretty neat. It would uh, beat the heck out of if I had to buy each of the displays separately and solder them all together. So it's, it's a convenient service that they provide. It's just an entire module. It only requires a couple wires going to it to control it. And yeah, so all in all, um, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. Just have to solder a little board. Probably going to use a smaller chip. There's no reason to use this giant chip with all these IOs. And um, currently, I think I have quite a bit of memory, of uh, flash memory available on this chip still, even with the entire firmware and the animations. So I can definitely add features, um, but that'll require some more time and, you know, that, not something I have a lot of nowadays, but. Anyway, uh, so hopefully you guys like this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.